Hello and welcome to today's video by OKM 3 d My name is Sven, and today I want to compare two printers. On the one hand, the Zax X3 printer, and on the other side, not quite this one, but its successor, the M200 Plus by Zortrax. Uh, why am I doing this? Well, it's because there's still a bunch of these ones out in operation. They've been uh, being sold for quite a while now, and, well, they work. So a bunch of companies still have them, and they're still being actively sold as well. On the other side, the Zax printer is a fairly new machine that was recently introduced. And because of this being a newer machine, it actually brings a bunch of features that this one doesn't have yet, but they are somewhat similar in terms of build volume and price. So I figured, hey, if they cost approximately the same and have approximately the same build volume, what are the other differences between these two printers? So if you're someone that is looking for a printer with a build volume approximately 20 by 20 by 20 centimeters and around a price point of 2,400 euros, then this video might be for you. If you're currently using a Zortrax M200 or M200 Plus and are looking to upgrade or replace that machine at any point in the future, then this might also be interesting for you. If you're looking for a hobby printer below 1,000 euros, if you're looking for a printer with a build volume of over 30 centimeters, or I don't know, if you need dual nozzle prints, then this video is not for you as these two are both single nozzle printers. So without further ado, if you are still here, let's get right into it. First, why do I have this one next to me? Well, it's because I only had the Zortrax M200 and not the Plus version uh, standing around. But they are actually very similar. All the mechanics are the same. Um, the, build plate, oh, voilà. the build plate is the same. The M200 Plus has a touch display that is significantly larger than this tiny little thing here up front. Um, it is using a USB port instead of an SD card slot. And uh, the M200 Plus has a different hot end as well uh, with a PTFE tubing so that while the M200 was specifically designed for ABS and basically only ABS, the M200 Plus has the chance to print other materials as well. Major difference though is the M200 Plus has side walls and doors. This one's open, I can reach through it with my hand. Um, that obviously, if you're printing ABS, is not optimal. So the M200 Plus has side covers and a door in the front and an optional cover with a HEPA filter that you can buy as an add-on. Yeah. So those are the differences between the M200 that I have here and the M200 Plus. The frame is the same, the build volume is the same, uh, and all the mechanical stuff is essentially the same. And there's a bunch of really good stuff here. The Z um, guiding system is really solid and is greatly constructed. The whole thing is essentially one solid frame. Uh, nothing wobbles here at all. And for its time, this was a really good printer. You would probably compare this to well, back in the day, something like an Ultimaker S2. So that's been quite a while. So this thing has been on the market forever, but now there's a new game in town. And that's what I want to talk about. First, let's start with some of the numbers. What do they cost? Well, despite its age, this printer still costs 2,290 euros, roughly. That's what I could find. And if you then buy the HEPA cover on top to make it a fully enclosed volume, that'll add another 180 bucks. So overall, you're looking at something around about 2,450 euros or something. This one, the X3 by Zax, costs you 2,400 euros, but you don't need to purchase anything in addition. It's just the fully closed build volume already. So that's the price. How big can they print? The M200 Plus prints 20 by 20 by 180 millimeter, uh, 200 by 200 by 180 millimeters. So what, 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters? by 18 centimeters. The X3 prints 22 by 23 by 25 centimeters. So it's a number of centimeters larger in each direction, the most major one being Z with an added seven centimeters there. So that can already make quite a difference if you're looking at printing slightly bigger parts. Both of them are single extruder printers. I've mentioned this, so you can only print one material at a time. They're also both direct drive printers, meaning the motor pulling the filament sits right above the nozzle inside the printhead. With all the walls and the HEPA cover, both of these printers have a fully closed build volume with a HEPA filter as well. They both have an automatic calibration uh, with multi-point mesh leveling. For this one, for its time, that was really advanced. Um, they both have a filament runout sensor, 
This one also uses NFC chips to automatically detect what material you're putting on it, as long as it's also a Zax filament with the according NFC chip. However, both of them are essentially open platforms. You can use any third-party filament as well. Also on this one, despite that NFC thing, that will just not work in that case. But you can use any filament you want. Um, however, the software for the Zortrax, the Z suit, is not as flexible as the uh, software that is used for the Zax printers. I believe it is also based on Cura, so any option that you have in Cura is also available here. You can have essentially any slicing setting available to you for the Zortrax. That's far more limited. Um, both of them have a print recovery after a power outage. Uh, the warranty on the M200 Plus, I believe, is 12 months. Here it's 24, so you've got a bit more warranty on that. Then nozzle sizes. The uh, M200 Plus can accept 0.3 millimeter, 0.4 millimeter, or 0.6 millimeter nozzles. Those are your three options. 0.3, 0.4, which is generally the standard, and 0.6. On the Zax, because it is using the, the E3D standard, or the E3D V6 hot end, you have a huge selection of nozzles. So you can have anything from a 0.25 millimeter nozzle, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, anything that fits the E3D V6 can be used on this. So a bit more flexibility on that front. But how often maybe do you really change the nozzle? You just need that one that really works for you. Then about the build plates. On the X3, it is a magnetic PEI steel sheet that lets you flex it. And there are two variants on it. Uh, so this flexing allows you to remove the parts real easy. And there are two variants of this. There's either a completely smooth one, which I have here. In that case, you generally need to add glue or there is a textured sheet as well that then eliminates the need for glue for many materials. Not all of them, but many. So two different variants of this, and then you can just slide it back into the printer and the magnets hold it down. On the other side, with the M200 Plus, it is a perforated sheet. We don't see this a whole lot anymore today because these magnetic PEI sheets are just so much better, uh, but it used to be quite common actually. Essentially, it's a plate with a bunch of tiny little holes in it. And while printing, you always need a raft with this. There's no way around it. You get little dots, essentially, that fill up some of the holes and that holds your part down while printing. It does mean a couple of things. A, you always need a raft. B, it's actually really difficult to get it off the platform because these little things stick out downwards into this plate. So getting it off the platform always requires a spatula as well. And uh, then you need some violence to get it off there, but you will manage. However, some of these little endings will remain in the built plate. And even on the one I pulled out here, I have some dots on here that are white. So they're from an older print. I pulled them out of the platform, and in exchange, I left some of the black ones in that plate. That means that over time, this plate will become used up, and you do need to replace it eventually. If that is the case, there's like 20 screws around the outside that you need to remove, then you can exchange the belt plate, tighten the 20 screws again, and then you can keep printing. So these perforated plates used to be all the rage. They're not really common technology anymore though. So that's the belt plate. Maximum nozzle temperature, 300, deg 300 degrees here, 290 degrees there, both capable of printing practically all of the common 3D printing filaments. Then build plate temperature, 100 degrees here, 105 degrees here. Not too much of a difference there. With 100 degrees, you can print practically all the common 3D printing materials. Um, both of them uh, can be connected over Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or the USB disk. Um, they then both have a color touch display. The Zax one's slightly larger at 5 inches, whereas the one on the M200 Plus is 4 inches. Uh, they have their own slicing softwares. The um, X Desktop is what this one's called. I'm assuming it's Cura in the background. This one is the Z suit that is actually custom made. As for materials, as I said, both of them are open platforms, so you can use any third party material. They both have manufacturer made materials as well, and that's where there's a far greater selection for the Zortrax printer. On this one, you've got all the common ones. You've got PLA, ABS, PTG, nylon, uh, nylon uh, flexible materials, one with a carbon fiber reinforcement with uh, wood or copper additives. There are some metal filled filaments as well. So you've got almost all the bases covered from the manufacturer already. For Zortrax, 
Uh, there's ZABS, there's ZABS2, ZASA Pro, ZESD, ZFlex, ZGlass, ZHips, ZNylon, etc., etc. You get the message. There's a bunch of them out there. However, as I mentioned before, the slicing softwares actually differ a little bit. So whereas this one, thanks to Cura in the background, lets you edit all of the settings, that is not the case here. So for example, if I have a TPU with a short ADA, I'm probably not going to be able to print that on the M200 Plus. No chance, just because I cannot adjust the settings enough within the slicing software. Those are all the numbers. What else is different about them in particular? Well, the Zax, for example, has little LEDs that tell you the printing status. When it's heating up, it'll have red. If it's finished to print, it'll be green. On the display, uh, it's much more intuitive uh, in terms of how it all works and how you would handle everything. It's just the progress of technology over the past, well, 10 years almost. Um, as I said, it comes from the factory as a fully closed printer. The belt plate is also only guided at the back. Uh, there's a very easily removable HEPA and active charcoal filter at the back. It's just slotted in there with a magnet. On this one, as I said, you need that cover on top. And that cover is plexiglass. It's just glued, it's not screwed. So it uh, tends to break as well. But that, your mileage may vary on that front. Uh, the big things, as I've mentioned here, bigger build volume and the flexible steel plate, along with a couple of quality of life improvements. On this side, it still works, it still functions, uh, but you need to add the cover on top, which actually makes it more expensive. And, well, you've got a smaller build volume and you've uh, got uh, no PEI sheet, so that perforated plate always requiring a raft, um, and the software is less open. Those are essentially the main takeaways. So, as for a print, I printed the same part on each of them, and they both came out quite nice, actually. The only problem is, because I printed on the M200, as I said, didn't have an M200 Plus around, there are actually, uh, it didn't survive. Um, the ABS, when cooling, warps, and it didn't lift off the platform, but the part itself broke a little. It broke, so this part is actually needs to be thrown out. On the other side, the white one looks really nice that came out of the, uh, the Zax. I can touch on that real quick. On this one, it doesn't have a heated build chamber, but due to the way it's constructed and designed, it actually holds a temperature of about 60 degrees while printing for the entire inside of that build volume, which is great for ABS printing. So I've made the experience that on this one, ABS printing is actually super easy due to the temperature inside. Not even on other ABS printers have I ever really seen 60 degrees continuously. Most of them are more like 40. Uh, so I've been quite impressed with that. You can then also feel it if you touch the top, it gets real hot. So that's all I essentially have to say. Uh, which one you like better is up to you. In my opinion, the Zortrax is just a little outdated and is to be replaced. And that's why I made this video, because I saw that these are still being sold for 2,400 euros. And at that price point, you can just have a sleeker, better machine that gives you a better user experience as well. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. If you do have any more questions or comments, leave them below the video. I'll do my best to answer those. And uh, other than that, thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.